let's start from the top and talk about, uh, let's broadly define what is a circadian rhythm and why should people be aware of a circadian rhythm? Yeah, circadian rhythms, the word circadian literally means uh, nearly 24 hours. So that means these are 24 hour rhythms. Uh, we can tell that these are the internal timetables for every cell in our organ or in our body, including the brain. And circadian rhythms constitute the master plan that guides what time of the day or night each of our 20,000 genes turn on and off so that every function of our cells and organs is tuned for peak performance. And these timed activities in our body uh, do many different things. And they essentially fall into four categories. One is to improve our immune function to better fight infectious disease. The accelerate repair function to recover from internal or external injuries. Optimize brain function to elevate emotional and intellectual health. And most importantly, I would say circadian rhythm supercharge our metabolism, detoxification, and hormone programs so that we live at a reduced risk for chronic diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. Uh, so it sounds to me like what you're saying is that a circadian rhythm is effectively a, uh, an internal clock. It's an internal yes. clock that uh, cells in your liver use to operate, cells in your brain use to operate, red blood cells, white blood cells, cardiac cells, you name it, right? Um, does every cell have the same clock or do different tissues and different cell types have clocks that slightly differ from one another? Every cell has this has the same molecular clock, uh, but they have slightly different functions. So for example, in the brain, the clock may tell our brain when to go to sleep, when to wake up, or in other or in specific parts of brain, it might tell when we should feel more hungry and when we should feel less hungry. Great example is in the daytime, in every four to five hours, you'll feel hungry. But at nighttime, you can go 10, 12 hours without feeling hungry, so that's one aspect. In the pancreas, the clock tells when to produce more digestive juice and insulin. And in the gut, it actually tells the gut how to, what is the optimum time to absorb nutrients and to repair the gut lining and liver it tells when to take that glucose and make proteins and glycogen for example and in muscle the circadian clock will tell when to make proteins or when to break it down so the clock may be same in all these organs but they do slightly different functions okay got it so it sounds to me like the circadian clock of or the circadian rhythm um, is a coordinated set of actions that occurs in response to clocks, effectively clocks that each cell type has. And each cell type has its own clock that's slightly different than the cell type next to it. Um, these clocks, like you mentioned earlier, they, they regulate gene expression, protein expression? Uh, yeah, so they do many things, gene expression, protein expression, and also protein secretion. So for example, in the pancreas, the insulin may be already produced and packaged into tiny vesicles to be sent out, to be released. And the clocks actually get what time uh, the pancreas is most sensitive to glucose so they can produce more insulin or release more insulin into bloodstream. So they regulate gene expression. And then once the genes are trans transcribed to mRNAs, how to make protein out of this mRNAs, and also sometimes even the proteins may be packaged and are not fully active and clocks regulate when they're activated or released from one cell to another cell. Okay, so give us a couple of examples of, of other, I guess, blood-borne hormones that are regulated by circadian rhythm besides insulin. Yeah, so what we're finding is almost every hormone uh, has some circadian component. So for example, glucagon, which is the fasting hormone, also produced from pancreas, has a circadian rhythm to itself. And also how cells respond to glucagon has a circadian rhythm. Um, similarly, 
ghrelin, leptin, uh, many other metabolic hormones, they do have a circadian component to them. So that means at certain time of the day, our cells are more primed to produce, synthesize and release that hormone from the given tissue. And or, or the cells are more sensitive to that hormone at a certain time of the day or night. Yeah, I see, I see. Okay, so speaking of night, uh, one question that just came to my mind here is that a lot of people are aware of the fact that you know your brain operates in circadian rhythms and at certain times of the day, you're more tired than at other parts of the day, right? And it, um, when it's dark outside, there's an increased production of melatonin and that increased production of melatonin yeah puts you into a sleepy state and then you're able to go to sleep for long periods of time. When you start to wake up in the morning and there's more light, melatonin production probably decreases, therefore allowing you to wake up. So um, I think people are people have a relatively good understanding that your brain has, you, the supercomputer that runs your brain is uh, has a sort of like nighttime and daytime function. Um, give us some more insight here into how your brain is effectively under the influence of a circadian clock. What else does it regulate other than whether you're awake or you're asleep? Yeah, actually, brain has a lot of other uh, functions. So, for example, is thank you for bringing up melatonin because that's something that a lot of people can relate to, and it's the night hormone, as you said. And melatonin begins to rise roughly two to three hours before we go to bed. Um, so by the time we go to bed, our melatonin level is relatively high. And similarly, in the morning after we wake up, it takes one to two hours for melatonin levels to go down to daytime level. And as you mentioned, if we're exposed to light, whether in the daytime or even in the middle of the night, that light is a very strong cue to reduce melatonin production. And we'll get to that in future, huh? in, in, in a few more minutes, how that affects metabolism. The flip side of that coin is the day hormone, and many of us are aware of cortisol or the stress hormone. And cortisol begins to rise say, 45 minutes to an hour after we wake up and reaches its peak, and then throughout the day it remains high, and it should go down before we go to bed. So now, how the brain circadian rhythm works, or what does it do? We are finding that many brain functions are under sleep slash circadian uh, regulation. So for example, although our brain, we go to bed, our brain actually detoxifies itself because during daytime, doing all the supercomputing work uh, also puts a lot of pressure. The brain accumulates a lot of toxins and chemicals that our brain doesn't need. And nighttime, when we go into deep sleep, that's when you can think of there is a garbage truck that comes and takes out all these toxic chemicals and that is secreted outside the neurons and that goes into our lymphatic system or lymphatic system and is cleared out. So uh, circadian rhythm slash sleep regulates how our brain detoxifies. The second major function of brain is also to improve learning and memory. So our synapses are strengthened during nighttime, and circadian rhythm seems to be a strong influencer of that. Uh, so it regulates uh, how our synapses are strengthened so that we can create new memories and we can strengthen what we have learned at night, uh, during the day. So similarly, we are finding that clocks also regulate hydration levels. So for example, our part of the hypothalamus regulates um, blood, sorry, our body's hydration level. It also regulates hunger and satiety. All of these are now uh, shown to be regulated by circadian rhythm because uh, there are experiments where we can uncouple sleep from circadian rhythm by um, measuring, by putting people in very controlled environment, controlled clinical state, and then uh, carefully measuring all these hormones in the blood um, independent of their sleep status. And we're finding that this is very strongly modulated by circadian rhythms. Uh, 